Thank you first uh, for having me here. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to present uh, this um, plan um, for, for this distinguished audience. Um, just a few moments before the uh, uh, presentation will be uploaded. Eventually, I hope it will be uploaded. <laughs> um, <coughs> a few words about this uh, plan. Um, the, or plan or strategy, however we call it. Um, uh, the, the strategy of uh, Estonia relying 100% on renewables in electricity and the heating and cooling sector um, has been launched by two organizations, uh, one uh, Estonian Renewable Energy Association and the other environmental, um, uh, Estonian envi Environmental NGOs. Um, council, or, or how, however you call it, and um, um, together with these two organisations, uh, dozens of experts uh, worked on this uh, uh, this strategy. And a um, uh, few words before uh, I commence with the presentation: um, the strategy looks only at the electricity and heating and cooling sector, uh, leaving out transport, for various reasons because of the administration. Uh, administrative decisions uh, European Commission is about to take in, in this uh, remit uh, regarding especially the ILOC factor uh, um, decisions and, uh, and also there were various other reasons why we um, decided to do the uh, transport sector later on. Uh, also um, uh, we are not um, uh, trying to sort of challenge or attack anybody with this plan, but uh, what they are trying to do is, is um, uh, present an alternative view on, uh, on possibilities of uh, how Estonian uh, energy sector could uh, evolve in the, in the, in the future. <laughs> and um, so, um, so therefore, um, um, perhaps I will start. <laughs> <laughs> my computer is better. Okay. <laughs> uh, it opened on my computer, so. <laughs> okay. So e eventually, uh, I hope it will uh, will be there. Um, anyways, so um, this was a big adventure for us because we didn't knew really uh, uh, where we will uh, end up with this uh, strategy before we started with it, and uh, for. For uh, our um, own surprise, we found that uh, a full transition in, uh, on the renewables in uh, heating and cooling and electricity sector is possible in Estonia already uh, in uh, 2030. And uh, this transition is um, uh, technically uh, feasible, it's uh, economically viable, and it's an uh, envi environmentally sound uh, solution. So there it, there it is, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Uh, what we found also was that uh, compared to this uh, business as usual strategy, uh, which I will explain uh, later on, uh, the electricity price uh, is uh, somewhat lower, um, 20 percent, roughly uh, one fifth of um, lower by 2030, and um, uh, by 2050 even even one third uh, lower. Uh, the uh, production portfolio is uh, competitive and uh, due to the fact that um, the marginal cost advantage that the, uh, uh, that the renewables have. Uh, also, uh, there we also indicated the cost of this uh, strategy. Uh, it needs investments uh, roughly at the margin of uh, 6 billion euros. And uh, also we concluded that the uh, renewables potential largely in Estonia is untapped. But before to uh, uh, commence with the uh, production portfolios, a uh, few words about the consumption, because this is also prominent in today's conference agenda. Um, we um, did different modelings and, uh, and uh, also looked at the um, a legislation uh, requirements uh, um, deriving from uh, from legislation that is uh, applicable to all EU uh, member states, and what we found was that um, uh, electricity consumption uh, in the future is about to increase, 
but uh, heat consumption uh, is about to decrease. We took rather ambitious uh, targets uh, for the uh, energy saving strategy. Um, we uh, set the goal that uh, uh, and uh, annually, at least 2% uh, of the existing house, housing stocks should be uh, renovated uh, in, in order to save, save energy. This is uh, uh, quite ambitious re regarding the uh, past performance uh, in this remit, uh, in, in, at least in Estonia. Um, and, and also we took the renewal rate of the housing stock 1% uh, a year. So. Um, in order to implement the strategy of full transition into renewables in Estonia, um, ambitious energy <laughs> saving strategies is, is an absolute must. A few words about the uh, consumption. I wanted to put this slide here just to demonstrate that um, uh, we really uh, took, took uh, uh, very carefully our goal to really understand what is happening with the energy um, consumption and production and, um, and did the mo modeling uh, uh, by each hour uh, of the year based on the uh, existing measuring of, of uh, wind and, energy, wind and, uh, and so on. And what, what we found was that uh, it's fully uh, feasible to um, cover the uh, consumption of uh, electricity in Estonia with, um, uh, with renewables portfolio. What you also find from here is uh, how the base load uh, and, and peak load are about to be covered. Uh, the base is uh, relying on CHP, um, biomass CHP in, in, the, uh, in, in the district heating sector and then the industrial uh, CHP and then biogas and the rest uh, largely on, on wind. Uh, this, these are the resources that are available in Estonia. Uh, just to uh, put it more clearly, um, so what is the electricity scenario uh, of 100% renewables in 2030? Uh, this is relying um, uh, on more than 60% on wind energy, uh, offshore and onshore wind, then, uh, then on uh, biomass, um, industrial and, and, uh, and district heating. Uh, then uh, in order to store the energy, we have uh, um, proposed a solution of pumped uh, hydro storage. This is a, a real project that is under uh, development in Estonia. Uh, and then uh, rest uh, of the um, uh, production are uh, consisting from biogas, uh, hydro, PV, and small wind. Uh, from uh, heating and cooling sectors, uh, what you can see is that uh, if, um, if uh, the uh, biomass uh, CHP is being developed in, uh, in Estonia, this is uh, sort of uh, addressing two sectors, uh, um, meaning uh, heating also, uh, um, large, largely, um, uh, roughly half of the uh, heating demand in uh, Estonia in 2030 is uh, relying on the heat that is used efficiently in this uh, cogeneration process. Then uh, uh, in the district heating, uh, we also have foreseen uh, in places where it's not feasible uh, to develop uh, uh, CHP uh, bio uh, furnaces, then um, there are, there's also a proportion of uh, roughly 30% uh, of uh, local solutions uh, where it's not feasible to develop uh, uh, this heating heating. Uh, these are relying on, uh, on solar collectors, on heat pumps and uh, locally used uh, uh, wood. Costs, this is uh, an interesting aspect of, uh, <laughs> of uh, this presentation. And uh, um, so the, as I already uh, outlined, uh, investments uh, into this strategy are roughly in the range of uh, 6 uh, billion euros. This seems uh, as a, a very um, uh, staggering amount, but at the same time, considering that um, the energy uh, sector is very um, 
very investment in, intensive, then uh, these numbers are not um, not that um, outrageous <laughs> uh, at all. Uh, also considering that uh, in the uh, last uh, four years, uh, the investments uh, by the private sector into renewable sector in Estonia have been in the range of uh, 600 uh, million euros. So, so um, in next 17 years, we expect um, if their conditions are, are right, uh, that uh, this uh, strategy is entirely feasible. Um, so the uh, investments uh, financing uh, point of view, what they are suggesting is, um, is to rely uh, on this renewables uh, portfolio on uh, alternative um, investment uh, uh, support programs. So, so the financing means like um, um, emissions trading, auctioning revenues, then uh, EU structural funds, then the uh, flexibility mechanisms uh, from uh, the renewables uh, directive, and, uh, and then uh, finally the uh, taxes on, on fossil fuels. And based on this, <coughs> uh, we conclude that uh, there's no need to direct any funds from the uh, public curse from the state budget into this uh, transition. Um, alternative portfolio, which consists of um, two new um, oil shale uh, power units and uh, a share of um, Estonia share in the Visaginas uh, nuclear power plant, uh, has a cost of uh, 2.7 billion or roughly 2.7 billion uh, uh, euros. But there we estimate that at least half of it has to be um, worn by uh, the public purse. Uh, there's also, uh, at least in Estonia, have been uh, recently very heated debates about uh, the cost structure of uh, different electricity production technologies. And uh, what we, ha from our side, have, um, have done, we have um, made public all these, um, our uh, assumptions, and also um, um, listed different uh, various technologies uh, based on their cost structure today in 2020, 2030, 2040 and 2050. This is the picture in 2030. And as you see, um, many renewable technologies are competitive compared to uh, uh, nuclear or, um, or uh, oil shale uh, power units. And uh, putting uh, the different uh, portfolios together uh, of one based on 100% of renewables and the second on, on the um, sort of business as usual scenario which is, uh, uh, which is sort of developed work in progress at, at the moment in, in Estonia because uh, one of these oil shell power units is being built and the other is, uh, is uh, to be commissioned uh, next year and also the decision about the Visaginas power plants if, uh, uh, if the power plant will uh, eventually be decided at, at all or, or, or the, the project will go on, then, then uh, this is also something in, in, in the uh, near fu future for the consider consideration. Uh, but based on this, uh, we concluded that the uh, renewables portfolio, based on their co cost structure, is, uh, is cheaper than, um, than the alternative one. Now, a few words about the policy recommendations. Um, sources of funding for the renewables uh, transition that I've already mentioned are listed here. What we presume here is that um, the emissions trading scheme will continue after 2020. Uh, this is uh, something that has been confirmed also by the European Commission, at least by the DG Klima, that there's no sunset clause uh, in the directive and therefore the um, trading scheme has to be con continued. And we uh, assumed here that Estonia has um, 188 million uh, emissions allowances unit uh, to, uh, uh, to, to be sold in the, in the auctioning. And this uh, based on the uh, average price over these years uh, of 15 euros um, it would um, raise the uh, government uh, 2.8 uh, million euros, which is more than enough uh, to finance this uh, full transition. Also, we uh, based ourselves on the EU Commission proposal on the structure of funds that 6% uh, of the funds should be targeted to renewables and then energy efficiency and found that then 
based on the estimations um, uh, of Estonia's uh, uh, share, so uh, if I may say so, uh, this could range to 420 million euros. Uh, also, oil shale resources fee, which is something that we have also um, publicly um, explained. So, what, what, what is the, our view uh, on on uh, the how, sh how how big should be the resource tax uh, for the uh, oil shale based on on comparisons of uh, of um, different um, other fuels like biomass, uh, coal, and uh, and oil. And then uh, flexibility mechanisms. Um, so what we have um, uh, listed here is that uh, we hope that it's, it is possible to finance um, offshore uh, wind parks uh, in, in the range of 1,500 megawatts from, uh, from the flexibility mechanisms. Um, policy recommendations um, further. Um, so uh, what is needed uh, from the policy makers is um, is to um, uh, determine the long-term binding goals uh, in the remit of renewables, energy efficiency, and greenhouse gas reductions. And um, this, this means also uh, a, a list set of measures in order to achieve uh, these goals. Also, as, a, as we, I already um, brought out, uh, uh, an investment uh, grant program which um, uh, would uh, would attract private investments into uh, into the sector is necessary. Then uh, the sol solution of grid issues, uh, introduction of smart grids in order to facilitate facilitate the micro production, uh, mic micro generation into the grid, and uh, developing the storage capacities. And finally, to my last uh, slide, so what could be the uh, social economic effects? of uh, this uh, uh, scenario. Uh, firstly, um, lower uh, production costs for le electricity uh, by 20, uh, 2030, roughly one-fifth lower um, production costs uh, for the renewables portfolio compared to the alternative. Then um, uh, diverse production portfolio, this is uh, important uh, um, also from the security of su supply uh, point of view, then uh, cleaner environment, of course, um, something that, uh, that is associated with the renewables, of course, and uh, um, efficient use of resources. Uh, this is something that we took uh, as a basis when um, we started to work uh, out the strategy that um, uh, the use of uh, resources um, uh, with this plan has to be maximally um, efficient so that um, with this plan uh, the efficient uh, heat um, uh, consumption is uh, utilized in order to uh, produce heat and uh, electricity in the modern cogeneration plants and, and this allows to use uh, biomass and, and biogas also more efficiently. Um, then reduction of CO2 emissions, um, creation of new jobs. We estimate at least uh, 10,000 uh, new jobs to be uh, created with this plan. And we haven't uh, taken into account uh, the uh, jobs in the energy efficiency uh, sector and, and also the effects on, on other sectors. Then um, improving the trade balance with the need to re, um, stop importing um, uh, natural gas, for instance. Then improving the quality of roads, because uh, with the uh, idea of, um, of this uh, hydro pump uh, power station, uh, this will be producing local granite, um, and this uh, would be used for building the roads. And finally, the increase of the overall competitiveness of the economy. And with that, I would like to finish my presentation and thank you for listening. So, as René mentioned, there has been quite heated debates about this plan in Estonia during the last uh, month. And uh, they will continue probably here as well. There is one question there. Uh, Link from Tallinn University of Technology. Actually, I have three questions. At first, uh, have you taken into, into account uh, how 
50 hertz is guaranteed in power grid? It's the first question. The second question, how many additional land we need to cover with PV panels and additional uh, wind farms? We know that uh, there is a lot of restrictions. And the second and third question, how many miners in the eastern part of Estonia lost their work? Thank you. All right, so let's start from the beginning. Uh, the uh, uh, 50 hertz is guaranteed in Estonia system through the uh, uh, Russian um, energy system. And this is uh, true also for the next 10-15 uh, years, at least. And, uh, and uh, as long uh, as the uh, um, 50 hertz is, uh, is concerned than, uh, than um, uh, the uh, main uh, or TSO of, of Estonia Ellering is, is trying to look at um, various alternatives in order to, uh, to sort out this and, and, uh, and, uh, and rely on, uh, on central European or, or, or other solutions so that uh, we don't have to rely any longer on the uh, Russian uh, solution. That's first. The second question was related to um, uh, land, land area. area. Yeah, this is uh, taken in, into account. Uh, uh, the full uh, presentation is um, listed in uh, Estonian Renewable and Energy Association's homepage. And um, there are different assumptions listed there. Uh, for instance, um, uh, with the wind uh, that you mentioned, uh, for wind, uh, there's a altogether foreseeing 2,000 megawatts of uh, developments and 1,500 of it uh, indicatively, indicatively is uh, foreseen for, uh, uh, for offshore wind and uh, this is based on, on, on the current developments uh, in around the Kihno Island, around the Hium Island and um, then um, uh, with the onshore wind, um, we have now today already 184 uh, megawatts of uh, uh, onshore wind, uh, 100 more megawatts will be developed uh, this year, 100 more next year. So we are already almost up to um, uh, 400. So um, this, these are projects that are, are already um, being um, or, or on the pipeline or being built. And uh, with the rest, uh, we have listed uh, with uh, both uh, biogas and biomass uh, the, the need to, uh, for, for instance, for biomass, the need to cultivate the existing lands to, in order to raise silo uh, and produce biogas uh, through the fermentation from, from the silo. Uh, the land area is, uh, is listed there, by, I don't remember by heart, but, uh, but this is just a very small proportion of uh, of the available land in Estonia, which is uh, not ut utilized today. Uh, with PV or solar, um, if I, uh, I recall correctly, by 2050, we hope to reach to a level of 11% uh, of the entire uh, roof, um, uh, roof uh, square meters of um, available in Estonia. And um, this is not um, perhaps that ambitious, but uh, at least it's uh, rather realistic, um, uh, and uh, and I think this is uh, something that is feasible. But um, I'm, I don't recall exactly whether it's um, it's uh, solar collectors and PV together or PV, se PV separately. But uh, I can check it and, and answer you over the mail. And uh, miners. miners, miners, yeah. So as you very well know, uh, oil shale. Uh, is now being more and more used for production of oil, not electricity. And uh, considering the current uh, projects of uh, Estonian Energy and uh, Biru Kemia uh, Group, which are the two biggest producers of oil in Estonia, uh, they would uh, need at least uh, 18, one, eight, 18 million uh, tons of uh, oil shale in 2016 if their projects will be fulfilled. And today's, uh, or last year's, uh, uh, mining level was at the rate of, I think, 16 billion tons. So they would need... Almost 19. 19, okay. So they need roughly uh, the same level. In addition to that, there's a need for uh, electricity production. So what we have calculated is um, 
if the electricity production will continue at this level as it is today and, uh, and the uh, needs of uh, oil production uh, will be added to that, then you need even uh, roughly 30 million tons of uh, oil share, so more than, uh, than today. <coughs> so these are the developments at the moment, and it's um, very much about, about or up to government's regulation uh, how much oil production they want to see and how much uh, electricity production from oil shale they want to see. Just a very short question. Uh, cool to say uh, uh, very quickly, what is the uh, electricity price for households uh, when this plan will be implementing, implemented, uh, taking into account increasing costs for uh, compensating when 60% comes from uh, fin farms? So it means uh, ellering has to have to build more uh, gas stations. So um, uh, electricity price, prices will be cheaper compared to the alternative, that's one thing. And uh, considering that the electricity price in North Pool is, uh, or actually in, in uh, every other market in, in Europe, is based on the marginal costs of, uh, of uh, the uh, different power productions, meaning that, uh, that uh, fuel costs of different uh, power plants, then uh, Renewables have the advantage that uh, they, they don't uh, very often have the fuel. For instance, wind, uh, solar or hydro, they don't have any fuel cost. So they will be always in, in the market. And the more you have wind, hydro or solar, the cheaper the electricity price for the consumers. So that's the sort of uh, uh, contradiction that you have. So people associate very often renewables with a high cost, but it's but the contrary. Uh, renewables should be associated with the cheaper prices, not the higher costs. Okay. Thank you. As you see, it is a very heated debate in Estonia, and uh, it will continue to be in the uh, next uh, years to come as well. Uh, but uh, thank you, René. And now, um, many thanks.